Straight one, first rod went out. Green and moaning about it. <laughs> Rubbish cast, absolute terrible cast. And it sprung back a wee bit, so that's a bit weird. And then it screamed off, so we're into the first, I think, of our target species. Can get it through this wheat. Come on, up, come. He's a nice one. There you go, maybe after a start. <laughs> Close to double figures. Off the bat. I'll decide to have the screws in me. We'll wait and we'll see. <laughs> well, let's get him up, get him on out. You take the rod <laughs> Well, as I was saying, we've not even set all the rods up. Literally, the first rod that went out sprung back. Well, that's weird. I wonder if it's tied or whatnot. Then all of a sudden, bent over, screamed off. The fish has had its revenge, however. Now we've got a hole in my palm. But that is one of the risks with these fish. Still a bit lively. But that. Is our target species for today. <laughs> we can just hold them up there like that. Cracking spur dog, probably eight or nine pounds. They do go to double figures in here. At this mark in particular. We've been told. We've been told. Although this is our first visit to this mark. It looks good on the maps. I think that's the one that got me. Yeah. Look at the one on the second or so, the size of that. But yeah, lethal fish. You just need to be really careful handling them. Which I wasn't. Caught off guard. Happened too quick. One more pose. That's a wee photo as well, maybe. <laughs> there. Lovely spot to start. I've seen 8 or 9, but it could go 10, but who cares? All it is, it's a PB. 100% PB. Biggest spot I've had. Let's get them back. Slap them into the reed. They're impressive fish when they get to that size, aren't they? Don't imagine what a 20 pounder would look like. I might need to give them a little chuck over this weed. Yeah, let's do that. A leg and a wing, and away we go. It stops. And away. So yeah, welcome back to Angling 360. Uh, we're on, back in the west coast, back out with the big rods. Thankfully, the weather's a wee bit nicer than the last time we had these big rods out. Last time we were after bass and smooth hounds. Bit further north, up in the northwest coast of Scotland now. And we're after spur dog. Well, as you can just see. <laughs> so that bodes well for the rest of the day. We were literally just, just set up. That rod's been in five minutes. I think Ross is still, he's, he's still got another rod to go out, so... Fingers crossed that's not the only fish of today. But as we go through today, hopefully get a few more fish. We'll talk through the setup, we'll talk through the rods, the reels, the usual bits and pieces. And we'll see, yeah, we'll see how it goes. All good but, tackle starts. Aye, right, but so far, so good. How's the injury? <laughs> it's literally a whole week in my palm, but hey, I'll, I'll survive. You sure? I think so. Let's get another fish. What's our last video? Well, not our last video, our last sea fishing video. So we're out for sharks. And when we say sharks, we went for top, smooth downs, and bass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also got dogfish. And the one that eluded is, is a spur dog. Who's didn't get any in your boat, did you? We didn't, no. Not a single Alex one. I snapped off by a couple. Uh, we thought we'd try and pull that boy today and go for spur dogs from the shore. And as you saw, Alex has just managed to get one with his head. First job. Big cheeser in his um, we managed to get one back for the first cast. We should have done nothing but moan about for 10 minutes. 
go as far as you wanted. It didn't. The clip came undone off the chaos, but oh, the classic. Yep. Yeah, push every cast as they say. Her. Just goes to show you, he's never know. Absolutely. So you were out doing it back doing it with Spear last week, weren't you? I wigged in Bay. And you done something, Alex, couldn't you? Ah. <laughs> 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 Just to annoy him, there's a bite in my rod. Oh. That far away one. Has he managed to tick off smooth down there? Managed to tick off smooth hill, mate. Aye, first time. First time, fished the whole tide from low to high. I was told by a few people, chances are it was happening at high tide and right enough, just about an hour beforehand. The rod just buckled over and that was it. And at local knowledge. Absolutely, mate, that That's is key. You've got a local knowledge. Yeah. Paid off, first cast. Yeah. Hopefully second, third, fourth and fifth and all. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alex and I were here last year, but over the other side. Um, what are you calling this? This is the anniversary, is it? It's... Um, a lock it's it? kind of aye. In the mouth of a lock, or is it? Mouth of a lock. It's where two locks meet. Aye, I would say. So for that, for that, somebody can tell us what that means. Uh, there's an island right in front of us, which I'm presuming will be quite a. I think a bit of a rip should a come bit through of a rip here. Through the tight. Yep, definitely. Is in and out, which I believe is for dog like. Aye, absolutely. So the baits we've got today is pretty much all mackerel on it. Mackerel, a bit of squid. Mackerel and big fella likes the squid. We'll be making mackerel squid combos. We'll show them later than the dog and bites. Nah. Mm, nah. Nah. There's a definite bite there, but... Aye, so hopefully it's not just Alex that gets us for dog and bites, and that's more wrong with this. Yeah, it'll happen. Time will tell. It'll happen, mate, I like definitely. your content. <laughs> right, let's see if we can't get one. Let's do it. Big fella in there, fish. There's one in fact, bites he was getting. We're missing a dog fish for us. Aye. Yeah, it's one dog. Oh, I'm there. Thought it was a fish. <laughs> no, it was a fish, it was a bite, but um, it's not a bite anymore. It was just that. Or that. No, it wasn't a spur dog anyway. I think it was a I think it was a doggy, then it must have pulled through that and came off. Never mind. The one of the pitfalls of fishing, this general area, the sheer number of crabs, there's like millions of them. This area is not actually as bad as a couple of other marks that we know, uh, but frequent frequent baiting, I think, is essential. And what I've done is just tried to be a wee bit proactive and try to tie up some baits or prepare some baits in advance so that they're ready-made, a lot of sausages, and they're quite small. A lot of the time I'd fish a lot bigger bait than that, but because we're having to rebait quite frequently, I'm going to try and make the, the bait last as long as possible. And we've got plenty, I've got like 16 mackerel there, so there should be loads, but yeah, you could add some squid to that as well. The squid kind of protects the, the soft flesh of the mackerel from the crabs. That might be something we can do later on. I think Ross has got some squid with him, so we're pinching some of that. But yeah, two hook panel, pulley panel. Like kind of standard go to setup for shore fishing. 3 0, cox and roll, specimen X. As your main hook. Pull that through. And then panel hook. 3 0 chino. Cock roll. Couple of twists. Nick it in the top. And that elastic should just hold it all in place. Give it a pull. Some people like the hooks pointing the same way. Some people like it round the other way. I prefer it round the other way. But that's the way it's turned out, so that's the way it's staying. And as a panel rig, as most of our sea fishing is. There's a bit of a, bit of a tide running here, so there is a need for 
trip leads or breakaway leads at least. Put that on there. Keep it all nice and tight. Hopefully nice and streamlined. Only really bit at the top. Club down bait. Breakaway lead. And I am just going to lob this one. I'm not going to put this one too far out. I'll fish one rod at range, but as far as I can chuck it. I'm not the greatest of casters, as far as I can go. And I think I'll just lob this one out. It's fairly deep, just off the off the shore here. Is that about 50 feet? See what it's about. Fairly deep, close in. There's no need to go too far with this. I actually went out better than I thought it would. And my second rod, rechuck that a bit further. Cover the options. Picking up that slack before putting the rod in the rest. The deeper the water, the bigger the bow you get in the line, so you need to pick up that slack in between. And then these fish can kind of tear off. That first one I got almost ripped the rod off the stand. So fishing a fairly tight bait runner, but still set that bait runner. Just in case. There's a bite on that left hand rod there. Just sprung back a little touch there. I don't know if it might, it might have been the tide. But a little spring back on that left hand rod there. Nah, I reckon that's the tide. It looks like it's dislodged the lead and the lead's swinging around. So we'll recast that one now as well. Yep, fish and bait runner. Not overly slack, but it is set. Yeah, you can see that one just clicking away there. But that is that is just a tide. We'll recast that. Got a swurry. Oh. Took it right deep though, but uh, managed to cut the hook out. So, hi, there we go. Long period of time with no bites whatsoever. Oh, that's one's done me in the weed. Come on, here you come. I mean, I just recast that, rebaited, recast. And bang, we're in. Don't think it's overly big. But we'll take it. Here it comes. Inhaled that. There we go, just a pup this time. Nothing too big. He's lively enough. So, yeah, squad dogs. Definitely a member of the shark family, obviously. 
and everyone thinks sharks nice fearsome fish they will eat you but they're actually really 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 delicate and you need to be really careful how you how you handle them how you hold them try and keep them level like horizontal as much as <laughs> as much as possible i think it comes down to the fact that sharks don't have a solid skeleton very much cartilage so their whole spine's quite delicate you'll see people holding them with a the tail try not to do it definitely don't post a photo on social media hold them under the tail they'll learn the hard way but yeah keep them level or as level as possible there you go it's starting to settle down a wee touch so yeah small one three or four pounds in that please welcome because it was a bit of a bit of a quiet period there That'll be, I don't know if that's gills, I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, definitely shark shaped snout. Five gills. Stand on the shark, lovely spots on it. And those telltale spurs. Right, let's get back. There's tackle tarts out there that ask us to tell us about our gear. Sea fishing, as we've said before, isn't something we do a great deal of. And because of that, don't go overly expensive on the gear. I, uh, these are two old pike reels that I use. Uh, pit reels. They're loaded with, I think that's 20 pound mono on both. Uh, one's a Witchwood and one's a kind of I think it's Sonic, is that right? I think it's Sonic in it. Sonic Vader. If you're a Star Wars fan, there for you. The beach casters, uh, Daiwa. The casting weight is 3 to 7 ounces, and I think these are 15 foot in there. These are actually pretty decent rods. Uh, I managed to pick them up in the, the January sales a couple of years ago at 50% off, so that was right up my street. But they're absolutely no use today, man. Having with a having with a bite. Alex has caught an, a lovely. He gave himself eighty nine pound, but I'll for once I'm going to be generous and see. I think it was maybe maybe ten, between ten and eleven. It was a lump, big biggest, biggest spur dog I think I've ever seen anyway in the flesh. Uh, Ross is he said uh, just the one Ross. He said the one a couple of knocks. Alex said there's a couple more smaller ones, and then there's me sitting there here in the corner with hee haw. Finally another bite. About time though. Come on. Yeah. Yep, we're in. Fresh mackerel, did it? <laughs> oh. Pet me off. Pet me off. This feels bloody massive. <laughs> See if I can get it through over the ledge this time. Nah, I'll get close to the water. Can you pull yours up? I thought that might have happened there. So it felt so heavy. <laughs> Stop pedal hooks on it. Well, that one was a long time coming. Slightly bigger than the last one. Probably about the seven pound, seven, eight pound mark. I felt so much heavier when I hit it there. 
Come on, set still. There we go. One foot. Let's get a bike. Hey, let Oh, that was much bigger, I must say. <laughs> We're in a big lump of weed, though. That's maybe why. Nice. I've been evicted. That's the way it is. Catch a couple of fish and you get shifted off your spot. I'm going to squeeze in to the right-hand side. I'll still catch fish. Don't worry about it. Let's get this one out. On the money. So while we're waiting for the big rods to burst into life or try to catch ourselves some fresh baits because we're running low on the frozen shanners. So getting them right out at distance, right on the deck. But um, not very many and not of a great size, but big enough to get two baits out of one fish. So not bad, we'll take it. Also, a wee bonus pollock as well. So what I'm using here is a big old Black Widow dead bait rod, a retired pike rod. Great for a string of feathers. You can fire them out to the sunset. And um, aye, great rod for the job. 40 pound braid. Not that it really matters, but nice to use. Screamer. <laughs> Must be my lucky day. They're flying up in the water sometimes, don't they? You try to keep up with them. Ah, come on, through there. I think it's off. Well, it was all a baby. <laughs> That's a couple of fish I've had. <laughs> I've come right up in the water and you have to reel like... <laughs> we'll miss that bit out. <laughs> uh, ah, you need really keep up with them. But now you can, you can undone. Not a bait now. Not only have I been punched off my mark, but I've been talked into letting Gordon get the next fish on this rod. <laughs> Better not be big. <laughs> Ah, no. It's a couple of times those clubs have filled. It went out enough. Yeah, we run two out of the two. Good start. Lulled us into a false sense of security, really. Close to, if not, double figure spur straight away in 10 minutes. And then kind of sporadic bites throughout the day, but nothing, nothing really got going, no momentum. But we got a few fish, that's the main thing. Cherry on the cake was that first fish, that's a PB for me, so I'll take it. No idea what weight it was, but I'll take it. Usually I double. I think it was, I think it was double. I think it was about You're giving that other one as you ate, that you had, Aye. then that other one, the first one must have been 10, 11. You know it was 12? Aye. Are you so size? Fish is thick. We'll let you guys decide. Answers in the comments. <laughs> what weight was that first fish? Massive. Be a man the next fish. Go on, then. Bite. Go on then. <sighs> then later on, we ran. <clears throat> Start here. Big Rossi's asses in the road enough. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so earlier on we ran through the, the rigs. Nothing complicated. Everything is pretty straightforward. Spur dogs, they're not really that fussy. Hi there. Well, unless you're Gordon. <laughs> uh, aye, simple, pulley panels. Uh, 3 0 cocks and rolls, went through the hooks and things like that. But broke, I spoke uh, briefly about just have been try, trying to be, sorry, excuse me, trying to be a little proactive and keeping baits prepared and, and, and ready to go. It saves you tying up baits as and when you need them. You know, they're, they're there and they're, they're waiting for you. So the way we're going to hook this up, that's a nice mackerel sausage that Gordon tied up earlier. The way the panel system works, I'm sure you could do this different ways. I like to sort of run the hook through the bait as if you were a, a ragworm. It's as far as you can. Pull it out. You want that hook point a little bit further down the bait, so you just pull it through. Turn the hook 180 degrees, pop it back in, run it through one more time until it almost comes out at the bottom. Pull that through. Tighten everything up, just pull that hook into position. Now, so at this point, it's maybe worthwhile putting a wee bit more elastic on just to keep that hook point nice and proud. So, almost kind of stitching that hook into place. Either side, crisscrossing the hook. Don't be shy with this elastic, you know, use plenty of it. And I'll just run a wee bit up the bait as well. So that should keep that hook point nice and proud. Bring your hook, your panel hook, sorry. In from the top. Wrap it a couple of times around the line. One, two, three. Try that again. <laughs> that just nicks in to the top of the bait. Holding it all nice and straight. The only real reason you need to use a pulley system if you're using quite quite large baits, quite long baits. It just adds presentation. Now I'm not overly fussy when it comes to having baits perfectly cylindrical. I'm not very good at casting anyway, so it's not going to make much of a difference how streamlined it is. But that's the, the general sort of idea. I like I say, we clip it down onto the, the pulley rig. So pulley system onto our lead, breakaway leads. And we're using these little splash down Gemini clips. And the way that these work, maybe quite hard to pick up the camera. But they just keep everything in position. Make your cast, make your, your bait a little more streamlined. We just hook the hook point through there. And this disc, we pull it down initially, and that allows you to clip it in. As soon as that weight, that lead hits the water, it's acting with so much force that the water is going to push this disc up and it dislodges the bait. That's the idea. It keeps it clipped until it hits the water. Of course, I think it's a splash down Gemini clip, we call the impact, like an impact lead. There's different names for it. And uh, yeah, quite release system. Freeze the bait up for a hungry spar, hopefully. Right, let's see if we can get Gordon a fish. Big man, where am I casting in there? <laughs> He's going to be a bit grumpy if he doesn't get one. <laughs> so spud dogs. I'm just glad that one spiked Alex's one. Right. Uh, it's still hurting. I've got a bite. Genuinely not had a bite. Um, it's probably worth mentioning, I know, that Rab here, he's fishing literally 15 yards away from me. Turned up. And within 10 minutes, had a spur dog. That's just the way my luck's been today. That's my rod. That's Alex's rod, but I'm on the next fish. Rob even said I could have his two rods if one of them went, and then I'm have went. So, at least as a team, we've caught what we came for. Alex with an absolute cracker this morning. Totally caught us all off guard. So hopefully the footage is... Does it justice? I think the four, going by the photographs, it looks really good. It does look bigger than a 10. I'd go as maybe give him a 11 for it. Because the one that he caught earlier was the 8, he said, and it looked, it looked half the size to me. We'll be kind in this particular, uh, in this particular fish, and I'd maybe give him a 11 for it.
Scottish has had a bit of a, he's sitting there in a cream puff and all. Alex is the door of luck. He's just seen me have landed on the money. Me and the big fella are next to a carry out now, so we've had a wee quick look at the maps for the shop. We're going to give another 20 minutes and start packing up. So I hope you've enjoyed this latest instalment of some saltiness. It's been fish. <laughs> See you in the next one.